everyone. It's the 22nd of May, down the allotment today, and um, I've not been down for a while, probably oh, just before the end of April, last time I came down, so uh, not long after I planted stuff. I think it came a few days after I planted everything. Uh, so I've not been down since, because I've just been a bit busy, and obviously I had a course I had to go to last week, so there's all the studying before for that. So I thought I'd come down, and I half expected it to be a bit of a state, but uh, there's plenty of weeds. Um, so I need to do a bit of weeding because obviously I've not really put much on the beds this year to sort of layer them up. Um, so the peas are desperate for tying back because they're starting to lean over. Potatoes look like they're starting to appear. There's plenty of weeds amongst them, but uh, like I say, I'll, uh, I'll have a bit of a weeding session, try and get back on top of it to a degree, and then uh, we shall uh, get back home and have a look at how these composts are doing with the tomato plants. Right, so uh, we'll start up this end. This is obviously a fruit cage with blueberries. Quite a few berries, not as many because I did heavily prune them. So, but there's berries on. I did weed in there last time I was here, to be honest, and I buried all the weeds in a trench. I thought I'd have some Brussels sprouts to plant in, but uh, the seedlings just don't seem to want to germinate. So uh, I'll put some else in there at some point. Hope you can hear me okay. I've not got a filter on my microphone, so it might pick up the wind a bit. Um, onions in there, um, they're doing all right. There's a couple that look a bit rotting slowly so I'll whip them out just in case there's anything untoward that's going to spread so I'll just, instead of trying to think they'll do any good I'll just pull them out because it tends to I've had it before it kind of spreads from that area um, I put the, some leftover the um, Kelsey onions in the asparagus bed so I'll set them supports off and just let them uh, do their own thing say so the asparagus has gone absolutely mental so I'll just take some of the lower shoots off and then I'll leave it to do its thing Potatoes, uh, you kind of make them out now. I need to just go in between, do a bit of weed, probably give them another bit of a hill, um, and then they, they can do their own thing. I think there was three rolls of Orla. Then we've got a Maris Pier, a Charlotte, and then we've also got a Jazzy. So oh, I don't know if there's going to be any volunteer potatoes, but you never know. Um, so yeah, I need to get them peas tied back. Probably do that first, actually, to uh, so I've been walking into them all the time. But they've come on all right. So it'll not be long, probably about another month or so. Um, that's when harvest will begin, which uh, does concern me a bit because these cauliflower, I've got to put some serious size on. Um, like I said, we've had some a bit of rain and then obviously we've had nothing but dry spell. It's been quite ridiculously dry, so they need to kind of get double that size pretty quick. As for the broccoli, the same as well. Uh, got some plants that are obviously smaller for some reason. I don't know if there's a dry pocket underneath them with uh, rodents digging about under them in beds because I know when I was planting a few that uh, you, you kind of put the trowel in and uh, there's a big hollow underneath them. So uh, I just have to uh, give them a bit of, I don't know, extra watering and that. Looks like a random carrot or something growing there. But, uh, we've got some spring onions. Uh, I'll probably start taking them in a couple of weeks. Uh, don't want them too big. Beet roots, these are red onions, plenty of weeds, so I need to get in there and get them cleared because onions and weeds don't do well. Uh, I don't think I've lost any garlic, so, but that needs a, a weed, and there's nothing in this end of the bed, obviously, because I'm probably going to put sweet corn there. Um, go over to this bed. It's got the primal too in the rigoletto. There's one in the middle there, it's a bit slow, it's really slow, full of weeds, so uh, I need to get on top of it today. Uh, my pass, I'll probably come down on a karma day and just spray my pass with a bit of weed killer. Because um, I'm not going to bother like hoeing my pass off, it's just, I don't know, it's just, if I've got time I will, but otherwise if I haven't, I'll just, uh, I'll just spray it at a later date. The main thing is get the beds clear so the things aren't competing with the, with the weeds. So uh, I'll get on with some stuff and then we'll have a look around uh, before we head back home. Alright, well, can you hear me alright? Because it's, uh, it's a little bit breezy, so I'm done for today. So I've had a probably about two and a half hours just weeding clearing up I put a little bit of weed killer down just I was just really careful on the pass because uh, I did start clearing some of it and I thought oh, I'll be here all day so I just sort of like pin the spray to the ground and just uh, give it a fairly weakish mix and we'll just see how that gets on um, so we'll start down here so all this is uh, weeded that one there I've just scuffed it with a hoe and the top can dry out, the weeds will just dry out over the next day or two of them. So uh, everything's had a, had a bit of a water, even though you won't tell it's dried out pretty quick. Garlic's all weeded. 
um, all that's all weeded the onions are a bit toppling now so we'll just see what happens um, like I say it's been a bit of a mess this year just a uh, time to get down really we're looking after my dad and that it's, um, it's tricky to get the uh, the long hours to come down and have a good good at it so the, the broccoli has been watered it is actually forming some small heads so I'm not expecting uh, much off that but never mind it'll be time to sell the next batch in a couple of weeks anyway so uh, maybe I'll get a second run it'll be a bit better I think the beds are just actually uh, pretty depleted now and they just need um, dosing up with some manure or you know some something in there to uh, to rejuvenate them a bit because I, I usually put a bit of blood fish and bone meal in them early in the season but I didn't this year uh, cauliflower it's all weeded out now tied the peas back um, sort of rehilled the spuds and scuffed the weeds off in between so I just, I just raked them all in with the mounds so they'll dry out anyway um, oh, better put my uh, secateurs up down there I decided to hack all the asparagus off and sort of bend the tops over to find the tender bit and uh, so they're still sprouting so I mean it's only like last week of May so I might just keep cropping it for another month and let it grow um, I'm hoping I can get down again later this week if not it'll be early next week um, but yeah that's had a bit of a bit of a weed solves this onion bed fruit cage all I did in there was I just sprayed a little bit of weed killer in there so uh, at least I'm kind of a bit bit caught up now. I'm just hoping I'm not caught anything with any weed killer, but um, I was as careful as I could be. So uh, we'll head back home and uh, have a look at these tomato plants. Right, we're going to have a look at how these uh, tomato plants have got on in the different compost. There is nine different ones here. Um, some, you know, obviously have been uh, donated for me to sort of try out. So um, they will all work, you know, but the, this, this idea was to see how things go and when they run out of food because they've not, not had any feed in them at all they're just whatever's been in the, in the compost so there's um there's some obviously that are more loamy based and some that are more fibrous um watering has been tricky on some of the um compost um that are more fibrous based because they just dry out so quickly and um let's say instead of because i was only growing these to, to show how long it takes before um they start to suffer you know cause obviously there's some of them are showing, showing signs of yellowing and they're getting like the, the, the purple veins at the back which is you know and the, the leaves are purple tinge which kind of to me it's usually something like a, a phosphorus um sort of lacking you know a little bit of nitrogen with the yellowing um, obviously you're going to get some yellowing on some lower leaves anyway eventually um but they've had ample space in the polytunnel along with other tomato plants um, but they will all work, you know, there isn't a, like a really terrible one, it's just that you might have to supplement the feed. Um, so it just goes to show it's not always about how much it costs. Um, and the, the results have been quite surprising to be honest. Um, what did well last year hasn't done as well this year. So we'll go through. Um, we'll start with this first one here. I well, you can see that but it's, uh, I'll bring it closer. This one is obviously quite depleted, you know, it's yellow and it's nitrogen based and it's purple on the back, which is like, you know, a, as far as I'm aware, it's like a, a phosphate deficiency. You know, a general, you know, tomato feed or a general sort of, uh, eat, you know, balanced feed would kind of help that. Quite a soil based soil, quite heavy. It has been good at retaining water. So, um, but I would recommend something like that to put a little bit of perlite or vermiculite in it because obviously um, dense compost, you know, it can uh, struggle with the roots to be able to uptake the nutrients because they do need air as well. So I'll, I'll, I'll name each one after. And then we have uh, another one here. It's starting to show the signs, not quite as bad as that one. And you go through them and they gradually, you know, this one is very light upright for some reason. Don't know why. Um, it's just grown that way. Um, but this one has probably been the one of the ones that's been drying out a lot. But it's it's grown with an upright habit like that. And um, it's not something that tends to happen all the time. But they've, they've, said they've all been under the same growing conditions. And then you go across to, you know, something a bit more like this one. 
healthy. It's started to show signs on the lower leaves, you know. Um, but obviously the price difference is, you know, it's, it's like half the price for that one. We'd expect the deer ones would always do best. Um, but it's proved not to be the case this time. Um, so I'll go through, like I say, it's, it's, there's no preference. You know, if you're using these composites, fine. And say I've not added any feed to these. It's straight out of the bag, straight in. And they were all money maker. They're all the same variety from the same sowings because you probably saw me sowing them and then pricking them out in a video to put in these pots. So uh, we'll start off with this first one. I'll start naming them now. This one here is uh, supplied by B&Q. This is the uh, Westland veg vegetable soil. Um, I think it was in a 40 litre bag. It's quite dense and heavy. Might be okay for potatoes, but that's yet to find out because obviously the potatoes are still growing. Another month or so yet left on them. Then we have, I was given two types of verve compost, which is another one supplied by B&Q. Um, basically, uh, just two different suppliers. So uh, Joy, who, uh, who she's head of the gardening department at my local B&Q, she said, you know, try both out and let her know if there's any difference. There is a difference in, in how the compost feel. One is really light and one is a little bit heavier. I think one's got a lot more of that cocoa peating. Which one I don't know, I'll have to send her the, the cereal number so she can tell me which is which. So I'll put the other verve one with that after. So I'll move them up there a bit. I'll do the next verve one. This is the other verve one. Uh, Started to like, I say there's some flowers coming out. You know, um, obviously this one is not holding water as well because it just feels a lot lighter. See, so, um, but again, it's showing the, a uh, lot of purple on the back started with, it's all you need all the uh, macronutrients like magnesium as well um, so there's the two verbs side by side um, this one here is the Westlands mature number three that was supplied by B&Q as well um, so it's quite on the small side but um, it's got a, a spot on the leaf there which is also like you know phosphorus and magnesium type deficiency it's not just about your, your general sort of nitrogen phosphates and potassium they do need the other things like copper iron and things like that um, this is why some compa compost this is why liquid seaweed's good a good feed because it has lots of different sort of micronutrients in it and this one is one that i uh, i do like this compost um, and i'm going to be putting my peppers on into it um, but going off this um, we shall have to see how they get on. Uh, but this is the Westlands Multipurpose with John Ernest. Now this was a good compost last year. All my peppers were in it last year. And it, it, it's usually a good compost. It's quite woody and it dries out rapidly. That's the only problem with it. It does dry out quick. So I'll move all them up then, up that end. So prices on them vary but most are around sort of the uh, probably seven, seven to ten pound per 50 litre sort of mark. So not the cheapest. Um, then we have this one which was sent from JBAC Potatoes or Jameson's. This is a multi-purpose. Um, six months feed apparently, but it is showing signs of lacking. Um, it does dry out quite quick. It's a lovely compost to use. And I think, you know, uh, my tomato plants that are in the polytunnel, you know, they were they were in the same stuff as well, and they came on trumps, you know. But uh, like I say, if it's six months, it's a slow release, and these are in kind of high demand at the moment because uh, obviously the, the root system. I'll have a look at the root system on it. There's probably quite a lot of roots on this. Well, it's not root bound though, but they are nice, healthy roots. So that's the Jamesons. Now that is quite expensive per bag. All the links for these will be in the description below. That's the Jameson's multi-purpose. Um, I am using the, the Jameson's multi-purpose with John Innes as well. Um, then we have this one here which is uh, supplied by um, Scrivens Landscape Supplies. This is their uh, green waste. Um, like any green waste it's quite nitrogen based but it's, it's over. I mean it's starting to yellow a little bit at the bottoms doesn't dry out horrendously, it does dry quite hard on top, 
So maybe something like this would be okay with a little bit of mulch on the top just to um, help it. They would all benefit from the type of mulch in a bigger pot probably. Uh, been quite easy to maintain it on watering wise. You know, you can it'll take water up. Uh, healthy plant all, all in all. You know, it's got a few suckers on it, but like I said, most of the time lower leaves are always, uh, you know, uh, they start yellowing off, but the, the, the growing tip is nice and healthy. And then this was a surprise. This is uh, again supply by Scrivens building supplies. Um, there is a discount code below that should still be working, I think. Um, you can, these deliver UK, you know, nationwide, but this is their topsoil. Now I was quite surprised about that. That's just their plain topsoil. Very healthy plant. Obviously starting to lack a little bit, you know, um, but growing tip, really nice. It's a nice, sturdy, robust, robust plant. Watering wise, it's been great because soil holds onto water quite well. So plenty of weight, so no, no problems about blowing over where these, I've been waiting a couple of days to film this, you know, but it is breezy today where they just keep blowing over. But that one, good base weight. So if you're going to do courgettes or something like that outside in tubs, um, or tomato plants outside in tubs, you know, a good mix of that with some compost and stuff, um, it, would, it wouldn't tip, uh, top over so much. And then uh, this one, yellowing at the bottom a bit, but overall, it's a bit dry. Um, this is actually my own compost and it's uh, I was quite surprised because I mean last year it wasn't quite as good um, I've done nothing different it's just kitchen scraps and weeds and whatever I grow any off cuts of gone straight into that um, so it's just pretty much like worm castings really but uh, yeah it's gonna be because the leaves start feeling a bit soft but you know you soak that in water and in a couple of hours they'll all be perky again but obviously it started to lack in something down the bottom um, obviously light as well because they've they have been sort of grouped together you know a couple of inches apart so whether there's been a, a lack of light but it's starting to lack now but um, it's funny that uh, these three you know you've got the, 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 the cheapest and then you've got the dearest and those are all the mid-range ones but they will all work you know, like I say, it's just a case of adding the feed to it. So you could use all these for, for putting seeds in probably. The, the soil stuff you might you just have to be careful with because it can be a bit dense, maybe a bit of a Mickey light and that, but um, I tend to use more fibrous stuff for seeds and then the soil base mix are good for maturing your plants. So um, I'd probably say, to be honest, you know, uh, they're the greenest and healthiest which are the uh, two Scrivens. So there's the Scrivens Green Waste and the Scrivens Topsoil and then my own compost. So if you've got the space to make your own, it's definitely worth doing and maybe mix it 50-50 with one of the other ones. It's because it works, you know, it's cost me nothing to produce it. And I've sown most of my seeds in it this year. So um, yeah, if you can get into the, the habit of composting, it will bring the cost down because compost prices are very, very expensive this year. You know, um, I think the, the Jameson's one, it's quite dear, but it is really nice stuff, to be honest. I think, you know, with the right application, you know, um, vermiculite and things like that and feeding, it will, it will probably hold nutrients quite well. You know, and in a bigger pot, I don't see any real problems with it, um, but it is quite pricey. Um, it's probably, you know, um, three times the price of them but uh, but that's the results of the tomatoes but the potatoes could be completely different so we'll have a look at how the potatoes are doing um, at their current sort of state um, I won't sort of look at any labels because they're all tucked out of the way it's kind of nice because it's like when they get near the time you can start having a look um, right we'll have a look at them right, so there's the uh, all the potatoes so they're just, they've all got a, like it's a single charlotte potato in each one. Different stages of growth, you know, and they're all planted at the same time. Um, you know, obviously there's a small one there, small one there. The rest there, I mean, that's, that's a good one at the end there. You know, and these two are, so if I go to that one there, that seems to be like the, you know, the, the, the bigger of, and then see what that, which one that is. And find a label tucked under there, so there. 
And that's, once again, that's my own compost. And then uh, that one at the end there, that's doing quite well. Uh, that'll get that Scrivens topsoil. You know, but uh, like I say, you know, it's it's all foliage growth that, and I've always learned off potatoes, don't always go off what's on top because sometimes you can have a fairly small top and when you come to harvest, you've got a lot of tubers. Uh, water retention wise, the, I'm just watering them all the same. They get probably a watering can a day, just sprinkled across a lot of them. So I'm not gonna, if any die off through drying out, then so be it, but uh, you know, these are part and parcel of it, the test is water retention because if you've got to water water them a lot and feed them a lot it's it's it costs you more and it's time more time consuming so it's finding the cheapest way and least time consuming so um obviously the topsoil is doing okay um but we shall know the results probably in july i'll probably give them i'll have to look back at when i planted them they'll probably have about 100 110 days or when the tops start dying off and we'll, we'll look at them then right well i hope that's kind of uh, give you some sort of ideas on thing, you know things you can try and it's not all about how much it costs um, and like I say you know that there isn't anything such as a really terrible cut you, you just have to work with what you can afford really and if you have to supplement feed and, and water extra then so be it you know but they, they will all grow something you know there isn't anything that's like um, gone drastically wrong with anything so I would use quite comfortably use all these obviously some more than others and I'm especially surprised like I say with my own compost so um, but it's not something you can get the, the mix refined with because mine's different every year because it depends on how many tea bags you put in and all that sort of stuff uh, because it's not like a measured mix where I imagine some of the other companies you know it's they have a sort of selective mix where like I say green waste it's basically garden waste really so it's mowings tree clippings you know probably in different quantities so um but uh, like I said, there'll be links for all these in the description below. Like I say, Scrivens, they've given me uh, a discount code. So if you want to have a look on their website, you can get, I think it's 5 or 10% off. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't expect the topsoil to do that, but uh, it's, yeah, it's quite a surprise that. So uh, learn something new every year. But like I say, you know, next year you could get some of these ones that haven't produced as well be completely different like I say this one the Westland multi-purpose for John and this is usually always a, a good one for me but uh, it's a very peculiar upright fashion but never mind you have to try these things so uh, thanks for watching take care and I'll see you next video see you now bye bye